Welcome to the Think Yourself Healthy podcast, where we challenge you to think differently about your approach to health and wellness. My name is Heather Duranja, and I'm excited to be here with you to take you on the journey from surviving to thriving. Hey, everybody. On today's episode of Think Yourself Healthy, I have special guest, Christina Licara. She is a personal evolution mentor who helps you dissolve your unconscious patterns and energetics so you can co-create your life and your relationships on purpose. I love it. I absolutely (laughs) love it. So wait a minute. You're telling me that we have the ability to create purposeful lives with intention? (laughs) Yes, exactly. Through your, your awareness and your energetic alignment. (laughs) I love it. So what does it mean to be a personal evolution mentor? You know, it's funny because I always kind of switch up what I call myself and there's, there's no real like label that I feel like fits it. But basically what I do um, is I help people see all of the ways where they unconsciously recreate the past through lack of awareness in the present. So, you know, desiring to expand in your business and your bank account and your relationships um, is a beautiful thing. Like being able to claim something is really powerful. But being able to hold that energy and receive it by being aware of how open you're actually being to it versus closing yourself off because of your past conditioning. So it's less about mindset and more about the energy in the body and the energy that you're emitting into your world through your patterns, through your old way of being. Oh, I love that. Talk to me a little bit more about how we get into that energy. How can we access that? You know, I think that the first place to start is always with the mind. Um, And for me, a huge part of my journey was living space of no thingness, like for a few years, um, I mean, I didn't live as a, as a monk or anything, but I had a similar way of perceiving things where I was only interested in silence in my mind. I was only interested in being completely neutral and seeing things as they really are and not how my mind perceives them to be. So I think a huge step before you can get into the space of playing with the world, the form and creating consciously, it's noticing all of the places where you were creating unconsciously by identifying with your mind. So creating space around your thoughts, being able to see your thoughts, being able to question them, um, starting to really awaken to the relationship that you have with your mind, which if you had asked me that 10 years ago, what kinds of thoughts was I thinking? I wouldn't even know what to say because I was so in my thoughts, I didn't even know I was having any. So I think a lot of people are still in that space and the creating of the space for that awareness is the first foundational step for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, absolutely. I think that the statistic is we spend about 95% of our day in our subconscious thought, that autopilot thought pattern. And most of us aren't even aware that, that we're there. We think that we're conscious. We think we're present. We think that we're making choices and decisions based upon free will. But the reality is we're lucky if we're using one to 5% of that consciousness to actually take actions in our life that are aligned with, you know, where we would like to see ourselves go and and what we want to invite into our lives. I myself, um, Mm. I was my worst enemy for the longest time. I had so many programs that were running that, uh, you know, were based in scarcity mindset, not being enough. Um, never thinking that I was good enough, that I would be able to achieve my goals and my desires. And I don't remember exactly how it happened that I started to have awareness, like looking back in the journey now, I'm like trying to like, how did I shift? How did I do it? And for me, I think it was just more about recognizing all of the shit all of the bullshit that was going on in my life and constantly being the victim and like, when am I catching my break? And then realizing Mm. (laughs) I need to start choosing the break instead of hoping and wishing that it would come. So talk to me a little bit, talk to the audience about how we can start to even create that awareness when 95% of the day, we're not aware. 
Yeah. So I think it's with the intention of wanting to watch your thoughts. Um, Eckhart Tolle, who's been my, (laughs) I'd love to say my personal mentor, but that's not the phrase. He's been like my main homie for like 10 years. Um, I, he has something in the power of now that's about basically like, see if you can watch your mind and see which, which thought is going to come by next. Like it's coming out of a mouse hole and you're a cat watching it. And I think that's a really powerful way to break identification with your mind because when you see that you're not it and it's not you, your awareness grows even if you're still entangled in it because there's like the light of your consciousness watching like, wait, I'm the one seeing the thought. Where did the thought come from? And I think so much of our stress and suffering comes from thinking every thought that comes by and thinking we're the ones generating it. Mm -hmm. So looking for it, becoming curious about what's going on um, and having that loose loose detachment in the space where it's kind of like putting your energy here in your body and hearing the thoughts almost as if somebody is playing a song lightly in the background. Like you're not fully invested in it. You're not like, Oh my God, why is it saying that you're just kind of loosely like shopping about the store as the song is playing, you can hear it and you're like, huh. but keeping your energy centered, I think um, is what really allows you to step into that space to start becoming more aware of the ways that the thoughts manifest as patterns and energetic knots in your body and then turn into action or lack of action, which, you know, creates your life. (laughs) Right. Absolutely. So is this where meditation comes into play? Is meditation one of those modalities that we can utilize to kind of um, facilitate being the observer of our thoughts? Definitely. Um, I love meditation, although I think it's important to mention that it's not enough to just meditate on your fucking meditation pillow. It's a great place to start, but you have to move into the space where your whole day is a moving meditation. Otherwise you're just hanging out there when you allow yourself to during your morning routine. And then it's like, Oh, you're still the same person experiencing the same things because you've just kind of put it in a corner over here, like I'll meditate to be free for this amount of time. And, and so it's beautiful if you're able to take that, I think, and make it part of the way that you move and be and vibrate in the world. The way that you do what you do in meditation is what you do in this moment and this moment and this moment, not always and not perfectly. I mean, of course there's space to grow and expand and we need those experiences, but as often as you can. So you're living that authentically aligned life of integrity all of the time as often as you can Mm -hmm. without just kind of making it like a fun little spiritual thing that you do. (laughs) Well, I know for myself when I, you know, I was told forever, Heather, you got to start meditating. You got to meditate. Meditation is the answer. And so I would sit down with the expectation of meditation, but then I would quickly become very frustrated, very annoyed because of all of the thoughts that were coming. And I had this expectation that with meditation, we were supposed to let go of all of the thoughts. So what are some tips that you can give the listeners who are interested in incorporating meditation, but also find it very frustrating and defeating? Mm, Yeah. So I think the long answer is... (laughs) I'll start with the short answer. The short answer is uh, the path to peace isn't about getting rid of anything. It's about being able to sit within it, no matter what's cropping up. That's how you become free. The long answer, which I'll make it a shorter and long that answer. Fire. That was fire. Is I, so something about me is in 2015, I almost checked myself into a mental hospital because my mind was so loud and it was so traumatic and I felt so out of control I had just really started diving into the work of witnessing my mind. And I was like, oh man, like I'm messed up. This is like some, some serious stuff. And my energy healer and friend was like, I don't think you're supposed to go to the mental hospital. I don't think you're supposed to take anything to quiet your mind. I don't think you're supposed to distract yourself. I think you're supposed to learn how to be at peace so you can teach other people. And I was like, what? no, I can't, I can't just not, you don't even know what's going like all this stuff. I was so resistant. And then I decided to practice it. And obviously, you know, that's what ended up happening. But um, I decided to be like, Oh, if it's not me and what it's saying has nothing to do with me and it's all just stories and it's, it's not who I am. Like I'm going to sit with it. 
And it was, it was hard and it was painful because I gave all of these meanings to these sounds and these words that I created in these stories. And my energy was pulled in all these different directions. And once I learned how to just hear it and be in this space of stillness, that's when everything shifted for me. So at that time, I would have given everything in my bank account for a quiet mind. Literally, I would have been like, you can have, you can have the shirt off my back. I don't even care. I'll live naked in the woods if I can be free. And now I'm like, mm, this is part of the path. Being able to be in the noise, being able to be in all the discomfort is what gets you there. And it's the only way I think you can really authentically live from that place because you're not afraid of your mind anymore. You're not afraid of what comes up. You're not like, oh no, I healed this years ago. I worked through this. You're just like, hi, you again? Mm, I'm meeting you from a new space now. Mm, that is powerful. That is so powerful. And it really, really resonates with me um, in this last year well, with 2020. Ah, hello, 2020. <laughs> now into 2021. Um, I, you know, this is where I've really been able to observe and celebrate the growth that I've had with all of the chaos, with all of the uncertainty, with all of the massive changes that have occurred for me personally. I recognize that I'm showing up and responding to life in a completely different manner in a much more at ease, um, state of comfort than what I had done previous years where I can't even imagine what 20, I can't even imagine what 2020 would have been like for me. Had I been caught up in all my fucking stories, like seriously, I can't even, woo. <laughs> But to be able to sit back and now celebrate, right? And be like, wow, all of that, all of those challenge, all, all of the discomfort, all of the things that I had to go through helped get me to this place that I'm at now where all of those things are still there. Those things haven't gone mm -hmm. away. It's the way I'm responding to all of the things and showing up for myself. And that's where the true empowerment and beauty lies. So what are your thoughts about that? I mean, as you were saying that my mind already heard the word, that's where your true power lies. So those are my thoughts about that. Exactly. It's like, um, I was just talking about this on my masterclass this morning. I am launching a new course right now. And I know that before I launch something, life is like, oh, you want to go deeper in these codes? Like slides all the shit across the table. And it's my job to not freak out and run away, but to be like, yes, I've been at, I've asked to be in, in deeper alignment and integrity with said codes. And this is my process to do that. So I think that if you can understand that every moment contains a path to your higher self and it's an invitation to go beyond new energetic frequencies and levels of consciousness, then you can kind of chill the fuck out a little and be like, hmm, how do I want to meet this instead of what most people do is they lose consciousness and then they re-identify with that program or pattern or story. And then they're like, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm so fucked up. I'm so broken. Why? Da, 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 da. And it's like, allow it to be, mm -hmm. see it, witness it, create awareness around it. And I think that is the key in expanding and jumping and quantum leaping into those new energetics mm -hmm. is not making it mean something when they crop up, but being the expanded version of yourself who meets it in that moment. It's, it's so powerful because I can't control my thoughts. I can't control what triggers me. I can't control what happens in the physical world. I can just meet it with awareness. And as I do, I expand and expand and expand. And also I can hold space for that process for the human part of me with love and compassion where it's like, Oh, interesting. Okay. I see this. You know, I don't get stuck in it. I don't make myself wrong for it. And I don't tell myself this shouldn't be happening. I should be present. I should be happy. I'm just like, it's here mm -hmm. and that's okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Everything you just said. I love it. I, I absolutely love it. <laughs> I feel really blessed that I've chosen to do the work over mm -hmm. the last many years to get to this state, to get to this level of consciousness Looking back over the journey, I'm like, I never imagined that I'd be here. 
I never imagined that I could be the person that stands before you now having this conversation Mm. because I was so attached to my pain bodies. I was so attached to the suffering, but was completely unaware of how attached I was to those things and how they were dictating my life folding out what was happening in the present moment. Um, I just thought it was, you know, all of, all of the victim stuff. And, um, I feel so blessed to be here. It's, it's such a beautiful, Mm. beautiful place to be. And I want the listeners to know that we all have the capacity to have an experience, this kind of freedom, this kind of love, this kind of compassion, this level of consciousness. I think that's what the whole human experience is about. It's about having all of the things and then learning to detach ourselves from the identity that we have established with all the pain and suffering and start to choose and show up differently. Mm. Whew. That's a whole sermon right there. Yeah. <laughs> I feel you like you. And that's the thing is I always say to people when they reach out, like to work with me or to be in one of my programs, even if they don't end up doing it, I want them to know it's possible to quote unquote, be where I am. Like, I think people and humans in general have this idea of like, ah, oh, you're in this high cloud. And it's like, no, I'm just in the present moment. Like it, it's, it's a special sacred place but it's not like some secret magic road to get here. It's just noticing all the things that keep you from actually being in it. And I want everybody to know and make it really clear. It's possible for me. It's possible for you because I mean, I just was so stuck in so many ways in life. Like growing up, I had several mental illnesses. Uh, I was, I wasn't suicidal and that I was going to do it. And I think there's like a phrase like ideation. I very much felt that way. And I was anxious had all sorts of obsessions and addictions to men and money and wearing designer clothes and basically feeling empty and like a piece of shit because of all these stories. I didn't even know my mind was thinking because I'm so in them. Mm -hmm. And my journey to this place has been unbecoming. I, I, for a while went in through the whole adding positive thoughts and healing kind of thing. And it, and it helped in a way because I was very repressed. And I, like I said, I had a lot of mental illnesses. So it really shifted for me to see things differently. But for me, what really moved the needle was like dropping it all and moving into presence and consciousness um, to be able to integrate thoughts if I wanted to, but not to rely on them to feel better or to see something differently, but to see the way I was seeing things. Mm-hmm. And that's the most important thing to me, because when you see how you're seeing something, you're just like, I don't want to wear those glasses anymore. Like, oh, and and it becomes a lot cleaner and simpler. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that a lot of people who are on this path have stories. I mean, a lot of people I talk to are like, oof, I was in such a different place. And it's hard to believe when you're in that place that there's something else possible. Yeah. But there is. And it's it's not easy, but it is simple. Right. Deceptively simple. Yes. (laughs) Deceptively, yes. <laughs> Keyword deceptively. I know in 2018, that was one of my low points, one of my lower points where I actually was so depressed. I was so suicidal. Um, I felt so hopeless, so lost. I had no clue who Heather was. And um, at that time, I actually had a friend who did commit suicide. And when my friend committed suicide, I had that, that kind of moment of realization, like, oh, holy shit, that could be me. Like this, this could very easily be me. And of course this individual was someone that no one would have ever, you know, expected to take their own life. She was hiding all of the, you know, the hurt, the pain and suffering very well, um, but after this experience, I, I chose, I said, you know, I've got to get, I've got to figure this out. And for me, figuring it out meant I needed to disconnect. I needed to go into isolation. I had never spent any time in my life alone. I had lots of younger brothers that I had to be responsible for taking care of. I left home at 17, became a mother at 19, you know, had two children. 
And so now here I am at a point in my life where my children are self-sufficient. They're no longer dependent on me. I'm not married. I'm not in a relationship. And I really didn't have any clue as to who Heather was. And the only way to learn who Heather was without attaching identity to the environment and all of the things around me was to detach and go within. And it was so scary. Like it was literally one of the most uncomfortable, frightening experiences I had initially. I myself went, I like literally removed myself and went up to Northern California and spent 15 weeks by myself in a hotel room and out exploring in nature every moment I had. And it was so amazing what I was able to uncover, like how I was able to identify who Heather was. And one of the, one of the ways that I was able to reconnect with myself and let go of all of the stories of who I thought I was supposed to be was to reflect back to my childhood and think about what did Heather like to do when she was a little girl? What were the things that put smiles on her face and gave her energy and, you know, all of the things. And that was the beginning that allowed me to start establishing and and learning this new identity of who I truly was that I had suppressed for many decades. So what kind of tips do you have for individuals to um, start learning and identifying with who their authentic higher self actually is? Mm. You know, it's interesting because I have been learning more about the fact that like, yeah, there is kind of, um, kind of think of it like two pillars where it's like unlearning who, who you've been and all that life has conditioned and caused you to become and stepping into who you really are in alignment with your true energy, which is the expansion of all of the universe. Mm -hmm. And so I think once you start to kind of realize all those small old ways of being, it's really about noticing them allowing them to be there, creating the awareness around them, moving into that aligned energy of like what is true and real and possible beyond that. Um, And then I think a big part of it is taking action to cement that in. I think, so what I'm saying is I think you have to be in it before you can learn how to step out and be more in alignment because otherwise I think a lot of people do this backwards loop where they're just like, I'm just going to embody the energy and feel good and be happy. And it's like, yeah, I did that too. And guess what? I still attracted and was attracted to the same dysfunctional relationships because it doesn't matter about your energy, just being joyful. It's the energy and your patterns and your codes and the way you show up in the world, which can really only start to create awareness around once you're in it and start to see how like murky everything is. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's gosh, everything you're saying is so resonating in me. My, my <laughs> yeah, it's tingling, it's tingling, but I feel <laughs> like a lot of, so it sounds like for, for both of us that, that isolation was a key piece of giving ourselves the permission and freedom to explore. And so many people have resistance around being alone. It's very scary. They're like, wait, no, I mean, I know I used to be the kind of individual where if I was home by myself, then I was calling, phoning a friend, or I was going to a friend's, or if I was in the car, I'm calling someone. There constantly had to be that interaction with other individuals because I didn't want to be alone. That all everything that was popping up was like, ooh, I don't, I don't, that's scary. I don't want to go there. But in all reality, it was the essential piece that allowed me to break through and have freedom to discover who I truly was. So, um, Mm. you know what I'm saying? And, And I think that this, you know, for all the listeners out there who are cringing right now at the thought of being alone for an extended period of time, (laughs) the reality is it's the best gift we can truly give ourselves funny you said that because when I was on that journey of awareness and my, my desire was to just create space around my thoughts and notice them. Um, of course there was a lot of resistance to being alone because that's when everything comes up, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm with my friends, I'm at work, I'm feeling good. And then my friend was going to drop me off, um, at my house. And I remember 
feeling like, oh no, I don't want to be alone right now because we were filming a TV show in New Mexico. So I wasn't, didn't even live with anyone. It was just me. I was like, oh, I have to go be alone with my thoughts. Um, and I think that's what most people really fear. They want to numb out. They want to distract themselves because they want to feel better. And they know that their mind on some level, even if not consciously, is a creator of that. Um, but that's why that Vipassana retreat was so beautiful because I looked around and saw grown ass men and women, like rooms filled with them, just sitting in silence, crying, screaming, pulling at their hair, like not being able to sit. And, you know, now I'm, I, I mean, I got it and I get it. But now I'm like, how fascinating is it? Because it, to us, our mind is so loud, but we can't hear anyone else's mind. It's just an illusion. It's not even real. And the meaning that we give to those thoughts and those stories and how we perceive them are what causing brain, but we don't even know that because there's no space to see it. It's just nonstop. So I think being alone and silence, even if you can't be in a desert, like creating the space, looking for the space between thoughts, you know, being silent, noticing what comes up, it's really helpful. Um, and again, yeah, it's uncomfortable, but I think that's what gets you to that place of like, huh, why am I so uncomfortable with this? What am I making this mean? My power, how much power am I giving to these thoughts? How, how are they missing in my life? And, and I think that's like a really integral part to crossing over into that space of being in alignment with who you really are is noticing who you think you are, which is just your mind. <laughs> right, absolutely. So you said earlier that practice, that, you know, taking action and having consistency around that is a vital part of being able to break through. So how does one achieve that? What kind of steps can they take to start creating that practice? So that I was talking about more like once you're aware of those patterns and like moving into the space where you're choosing, yeah, to expand beyond them. Um, and that I was talking about like, so for me, as an example, um, like I really wanted to work with this coach and she was more money than I had spent on it before. And, but I still really wanted to do it. I knew that I knew I wanted to do it. And I was feeling like it wasn't the time I was like, I don't have space right now. I'm launching. I've got a lot going on. I'm writing a new script, but she kept coming up in my field. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to move my launch back. I'm going to create the space. And then this is perfect. But we're just talking about space silence. I'm like, I'm going to see what comes up. When I sat with it, I was like, I really want to do it, but there's resistance. So what is it? So I looked at it and the resistance was, I want to pay my taxes in full. I want to furnish our new place in full. I want to give to my partner and I want to make this investment. So I was like, oh, so scarcity. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't know that in the moment because I'm, I didn't feel the scarcity, but I could feel there was some unclean energy. So I took that space. I cleared my energy. I decided I get to do all those things because that's the expansive reality I want to live in. And I hired her and I did it with the intention of knowing that. And now I've done all of those things. So that action, taking those actions, it doesn't have to be as, you know, as prominent as that one, but it's like seeing where you're creating resistance, seeing where you're at your edge when you're yes to this, but Ooh, not that, or, Ooh, I want to be free here, but not all the way there. Oh, I want to forgive that person, but not that person. Mm -hmm. And doing the thing that helps you cross over into that space um, to really expand your energetic blueprint and the way that you kind of move in the world. I think that action is really important. Absolutely. I love that. That's such a great tip and such a great example of how it can be implemented or how it plays out in our lives. I think many people suffer from scarcity mindset and they're not even aware that that's one of the root triggers that's causing them to, you know, take actions that are fear-based that aren't in alignment with what they truly desire. I know a lot of people, like for instance, when I decided a little over five years ago to become an entrepreneur and leave the clinical world and step into private practice, I was so scared. I was so scared, but I decided quality of life was more important. And at that time I was working six days a week, 16 hours a day being married to, you know, um, a building rather than living my life. And I was miserable and my health started to disintegrate and I had to get really radically honest with myself. And I knew that, you know, I was living in the Midwest at that time. 
And I hated it. I hated the weather. I hated everything about it. And I kept asking myself, like, why am I here? What, why am I still here? What am I doing here? And then the stories kept popping up because you need to be close to your family because you blah, 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 blah. You know? And I was like, says who, who, who says this shit? Like prove to me that this is where I'm supposed to be. And I challenged all of those stories. And, um, and then I decided to make a huge decision and I let go of my job and I literally sold everything I owned. And I think at the time I had about $500 to my name, had no idea of where I was going to live, how I was going to make money. I just knew that I needed to be on the West coast by the mm. ocean, specifically the area that I'm currently in. And I acted upon that and the universe supported me immensely. It totally supported me immensely mm -hmm. because I was acting, uh, you know, um, with my highest good, my, my greatest potential in mind. And uh, it's allowed for me to really be out here living my best life. And I'm so grateful for that. I don't know where the mm -hmm. courage, where it all came from, but it was just this inner knowing and I honored it. 100%. Mm. I, I love that so much. And that's been a big, big factor in my life as well, where, um, so I, I mean, I, I work in TV, my brother and I are also TV writers, but I left the corporate world, meaning I'm not producing other people's shows right now. Um, but for a while, my path was like, ending up in these situations with like super unconscious people in a very, uh, toxic workplace where I was like, ah, oh, I can't do this anymore. And every time I realized that was what the space was, I left. Mm -hmm. And at the time I didn't have any money every time, but I just was like, I'm choosing something else for myself. I'm choosing something else. And I always landed on my feet. And every time I did that, I reaffirmed, I'm not available for that. I'm not available for that. And so I think that those moments when you listen to that inner knowing and the light of your consciousness comes through beyond all logic and reason is when you really do align with that because you're like, oh, if I'm just thinking from my mind, I'm mostly in my programming, right? Your mind only has access to the same types of thoughts and patterns and programs that it's always known. It's just like a freaking computer. So I try to, especially in those moments, not think about all this stuff here and just be like, here's where I'm being pulled. Mm -hmm. Here's where I'm being led, what, what was coming to do. So I love that you did that. Those stories are so exciting because it's just like you follow that energy when you're in tune with it and you feel it and then everything really works out and you feel so supportive and like, Ooh, who would I be if I listened to that more often? If that was my guiding light and operating system, instead of all of this made up bullshit here. <laughs> great. Oh my gosh. Such a great point. Reflecting back. I, I think it was probably right about turning 30 where I started to listen to that inner knowing and not needing to understand the details of how it was all going to happen, but trusting so immensely in that inner calling and just honoring it no matter what. And now that I look back, I'm like, oh, wow, I've actually been doing this for quite some time and just didn't realize that that's what I was actually doing. Um, such a, such an awesome revelation to, to truly have. Um, so you were talking about being in other people's energy and recognizing that when you were in energy of lower consciousness, that that had an impact on you. So what kind of things do you do now to protect your energy and ensure that you're not lowering that vibrational frequency? Hmm. You know, I, I tend to think about things from a different perspective than most people talk about okay. <laughs> just a little, just a little trigger warning here. So I don't innately and naturally believe in boundaries per se, because I think a lot of people can just throw them up arbitrarily and are like boundary boundary. I don't like that. And from where I stand, it's been really helpful for me to be like, why don't I like that? What am I making it mean? Um, what is it? Because if I'm just saying it's somebody else, it's like, well, what's your perception and your programming and how is that active within you? You're not really taking responsibility. So from the get-go, I've always been more curious to be like, why do I feel like I have to give my energy away just because somebody else is unconscious or wh what's going on within me when they say that or do that? Of course, that's very different than if you feel physically unsafe mm -hmm. and 
you can make decisions of this doesn't feel right for me, but it's not coming from a mental place of like a judgment on that person. It's I'm not available for that. Mm -hmm. So that to say, I think that what I try to focus on mostly and always is just like be my body. If I'm having a reaction to something, it's like, Ooh, what's going on within me? Is there a thought, but I'm holding my energy here. Mm -hmm. Um, and then after that point, if it's something that's like hard for me to stay grounded, I notice that I don't try to, I don't beat myself up about it. I just notice that I'm kind of giving my power away. And if I need to create space, I create it, but I don't do it from this place of, I need space from you or this thing. It's just, I need space because my energy is not in the place to stay as centered as I'd like it to be and working on it. I'm wanting to be more neutral and see clearly, but I also don't want to just like throw myself into the, <laughs> the pit of snakes just to do it. You know what I mean? Like I, if, so I think it's kind of a balance depending on where your energy is for that. Yeah. Okay. So I, this might be a tough, a, a difficult or challenging question to answer, but I can hear all of the moms out there and the thoughts that are going in their head right now. So one of the notorious, you know, complaints that we hear from mothers, fathers, caregivers, I'm, I never have a moment to be alone. I can't even go into the bathroom and use the restroom without being interrupted. So how do these individuals who, you know, have all of these responsibilities, how, how are they able to create that space for themselves so that they can get back in alignment? Mm. Um, yes, you're right. I hear this a lot from my clients who are, who are parents. I think that it's like, if you can carve out even just a few minutes, and like, look at it in terms of space available in those moments, instead of I only have three minutes, mm -hmm. it opens up your energy a lot. Like if you're literally able to pee by yourself, instead of thinking about where you're going and what's happening, if you can actually like be with your body, that's a completely different frequency. And I think from being able to just make those tiny moments, like more open and spacious, you're able to do that in moments where stuff is like, <laughs> Um, because my mom told me when I was little there, she has this, uh, it's not hung up yet, or I'd show you, but she has this really beautiful painting of a woman and she's got all these different shapes and lines going around. And, um, she told me this is a woman at peace. It's not that she doesn't have things going on inside and around her. It's that she's holding this energy while it's happening. And so I think that that's a really powerful shift in noticing that like, you don't have to have quiet and silence and, and stillness to be quiet and silent and still within yourself. Um, and it's even more powerful when you can tap into that because you're like, Ooh, nobody can take my peace. You yeah. can notice where you give it away. Um, and yes, it is definitely easier when you have actual space to do it, but I think you feel more powerful when you realize, Ooh, I, I didn't drop my level of consciousness there. Um, and you know, kids are a really great way of showing that. Like I don't have any, but when I used to babysit my friend's kids, I noticed myself getting annoyed when they pull my hair or they like get snot on me. And I'm like, this is an expensive shirt. And then I'm like, Christina. And I'm like, he's two years old. He literally has no idea what he's doing. This is just reflecting back to me. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, bring it, sneeze on me. I dare you. You know what I mean? So it becomes, you start looking forward to those opportunities to really see how aligned and, and centered you can be. Mm. This is really resonating with me and I'll tell you why. Right now in my present moment, I have a 20 year old daughter that is sharing a bedroom with me. And I also have a brother who is visiting. So I am living in a very, very small overcrowded space with many adults. And there's all kinds of life happening. You know, all of us are working from home. There's, um, you know, all kinds of stuff going on. And these last couple of weeks, I've really recognized that regardless of all the chaos that's going on with everyone having different, you know, calls that they're doing live and taking, you know, webinar courses or coming and going, <laughs> all of the things, right? I'm like, I was talking to a client yesterday and she's like, tell me how you're doing. And I'm like, I'm really good. I was like, life is amazing. And she's like, but wait, you're still sharing a room with your daughter, right? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, and your brother's there. I was like, yeah. And she's like, and your roommate's still working from home. Yeah. She's like, wait, how is life good? Like, how are you doing this? And I was like, 
it's all about perception. It's all about choosing to be in the moment instead of getting so ca caught up in the chaos of the noise. And I've recognized that the way I've been navigating circumstances the last few weeks with all of these additional um, things happening, that I am completely at peace. I'm crawling in bed at night and I am like, I have a blanket of comfort over me that just is so amazing. So amazing. Mm. So I love, I love that. I love that analogy of that painting that your mom had and, you know, <laughs> having all of that stuff and really saying this is an individual at peace because I think as a society, we're kind of taught, you know, well, when things calm down, then I'll be able to. And it's like, no, life is never going to yep. calm down. It's never going to calm down. We just have to learn how to ebb and flow through it in the moment, mm. you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it reminds me, um, and working in Hollywood, I learned very quickly that I was never going to just like check things off my list, which the energy in, in working in TV is very fucking fast. It's like, ding, 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 ding. And you, you always have about 217 things to do. And it's like, no, this is the most important now, right now. And so is this, and so is this. And you're like, ah. Oh. And I realized, oh, it's just always going to be like this. I'm going to get something done that's going to shift and not matter. This thing I've been working on for three weeks is going to disappear. Something else is going to come in that's going to take my attention. And before where that was really triggering for me of like, I'm not going to get to that place of satisfaction and peace. I found peace that that's how it is, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, it's kind of like when you're doing the Thanksgiving dishes, you know that they're going to be so messy. You know, it's going to take a while and you just kind of lean into it. And then once you get about halfway, three quarters of the way through, you're like, Ooh, I'm feeling good now. Cause you've gotten in that energy of allow to be while also continuing to move and not getting stuck in it. Right. So do you feel that in a sense, it's kind of setting an expectation, like being realistic about the expectation that you're setting or holding for yourself? Hmm. The expectation in terms of how you're flowing your energy? Yeah, yeah. I think for me, it's less about expectation and more about awareness because I want to catch myself where I'm cutting myself off and then come back to the body and come back to the breath and like, ooh. Um, like an example, something that really triggers my brain is when uh, I'm talking to somebody on hold and they ask for my information and then I get tra transferred to somebody else and they ask the same thing and transfer. And I'm like, I already told three people, my name, my address, my phone number, my security, like all the things. And now I look forward to it because I notice that I have those stuck energetics where I'm like, this is annoying. And I'm like, Christina, K-R-I, like I use it as a practice to ground myself in deeper. And I don't judge myself when I catch myself like, oh, there you go. I'm just like, because I know that these moments are not siloed experiences. If you're not aware of your energy in this moment, you're not aware of your energy, period. You don't just have stuff with money and relationships. You have blocks in your energy based on the stories that you're telling. And that's what manifests in your body and how you create it. So I don't set an expectation to stay conscious. I just intend to notice where I'm becoming unconscious. <laughs> I like that. I like that. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great example because I think customer service calls trigger a lot of people. <laughs> they trigger a lot of people. So that's a, a great example. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> it's such a silly one, but it, it is. It's so it's so relevant and powerful because again, I think we have all of these ideas of like, I really need to fix this area of my life or heal this or change that. And it's like, all you really need to do is notice the thoughts that you're thinking and the energy that you're flowing to or holding yourself back from feeling in this moment, because how you relate in this moment is the way that you relate, period. It's not just in these different examples. It's like, are you here? Or are you in your story about this moment? You know what I mean? It's, are you recreating the past or are you open and, and creating something from present? And those tiny moments, those tiny examples are just as powerful as all the things that we notice where we have a lot of stuff around. Right. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I love that. So my friend, where can listeners find you and learn more about you? What, what's some of the cool stuff you got going on? Let's see. Um, I have a new website I'm really excited about. It's 
my name, Christina LaCarrie. L- well, Christina is K-R-I-S-T-I-N-A dot com, And that's also my Instagram handle. So yeah, there. Oh, I do have a Facebook. I just started. I'm super new to it. So there as well. <laughs> awesome. Well, I will make sure to um, link all of your contact info in the show notes. Um, Thank so you. Congratulations to you on the new move and all the fun stuff you've got going on. So um, I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. And if you had one last word of advice to the listeners, what would you like to leave them with? Don't wait for life to bring you the certain energy or feeling you want to feel. Flow that energy into this moment and watch it compound. Mm, I love that. That's fire, my friend. So good. Such great words of wisdom. I really appreciate your time and your expertise and sharing all of your moments with us today. And I know that many people listening have found it very valuable. And can they reach out to you if they have questions? Yeah, definitely. I I think that that's probably the best place is the Facebook group since that's more community oriented. Um, I pretty much save like my DMS for clients just because I get a lot, but the Facebook community is really great for that in the comment section. I do a lot of Q and A's on my story. So I really like to keep it integrated in that way. So definitely. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much for being with us today. I truly appreciate it. Thanks for joining us on the think yourself healthy podcast. Make sure you leave a review and let me know what you think. I love reading your feedback. Come hang out with me on Instagram at Heather Duranja. And don't forget to take a screenshot that you're listening to the podcast and tag me. I love to share it. See you on the next episode.